So let's have a look at this Vectron Volume setup. Um, under the Vectron Volume object here, you have User Data tab, and you can see all the different settings. It's pretty common stuff like the density, step length, the thickness. It's all stuff related to the volume, uh, so it's pretty basic. You can just play with that. And then you have all the colors parameters for the absorption and the scattering. This means that if you change uh, the colors here, you will see a change also in the in the Vectron volume. And um, you can disable that, so it's going to be white in this case. Uh, we can try to change it to like a light blue cyan color. And it's going to take a while, but you will see it's update automatically. So I'm going to keep it white. And um, you can also enable the absorption gradient. And to change the colors, uh, the way colors are mapped, you can play with the offset here and the color period and the min max color iterations. Uh, I find these settings are pretty cool because you have the whole gradients like map it to into the Vectron volume. So this is uh, cool. Let's go back to the scattering color, which is cooler, I think. Okay, then you have the emission. You can just enable this. And the same here for the emission. So you have the color period, offset, mean iteration and max iterations. Just play with that and see what... I mean, there's not a theory behind that. You just have to play with it. And a cool way to see what's going on with the emission is to actually disable the scattering gradient and set the color of the volume to black. So this means that uh, there's no volume going on, only the emission. And now it's clipping because the emission is too powerful. But to avoid that, um, I like to turn off the light source and use a dark, um, a black image in the... Um, as light source, so the only light source is the actual uh, actual volume emission, and then you can just play with the exposure. And if you de decrease that, you see this cool shape here. That's actually the volume emission. And um, so let's go back. Set the emission, the exposure to one, and enable again the scattering. And let's disable the emission. Okay. And where are the fractal parameters? Well, you can find everything under the vector object here. So if you do a change, like let's change the power to four, it will take a while, but you will eventually see the change in the volume. So um, sometimes you want to just look for a cool fractal and um, this approach uh, it's kind of slow because it takes a few seconds to update. So um, you can do another thing. Go in the Vectron Volume object here and disable the volume. And as you can see now, you have the standard Vectron. Now you can do all the changes you want almost in real time. Let's create something cool. Um, you have the helix, which will twist the fractal, the black hole, which is similar. And I will keep everything to default, but you can do whatever you want here. And another thing is that uh, once you did the changes, you can go back to Vectorum volume and enable the volume. And here you have it. So that's basically it. Um, another important thing is that the volume object has a bound, which is this green um, box here. If you decrease that bound, you will cut into the fractal. So um, let's try 0 0.2 and 0 
So as you can see, we are cutting the fractal. And you can see the inside. Let's try to go to this kernel, which is faster. And you are inside the Vectron volume now. You can also change the thickness. So if you decrease that, it's going to be empty, like here. And sometimes if you put a light source inside and decrease the thickness, it produces a really cool effect. So for now, I'll keep it to one. And also, I don't love this cut uh, in the volume. So let's set the volume bound back to 0 0.2. So we see the wall fractal. And there's another cool thing uh, you can do is um, how to move the Vectron volume. So if you move the volume here, um, it's going to move the bound box, but not the actual fractal. So uh, to move the fractal correctly, you actually have to change the Vectron transform position. So uh, you move around the sphere and the fractal volume is going to follow. Of course, now we are going out of bounds. So again, you have to move the volume bounds. That's how you move it around. Uh, pretty cool, not that hard. And it's pretty fast to work with. So let's reset everything to original position. And let's create a simple loop. So, um, Vectron camera, okay, I like this kind of look. Let's go to frame zero. And um, I want to animate the loop parameter here. So, um, let's disable the volume for a faster preview. Okay. And um, let's set the loop to zero keyframe that and set the power to five is, is fine. And then go to the last frame and we need to match the loop parameter here to the first frame. So you can do in many ways. You can store the render buffer and now move to the last frame and try to match uh, manually the fractal. Something like that, maybe. Yeah, this is going to take too much time to just guess the number here. So there's a formula for that, uh, which is pi. Just write pi for two times pi, basically and divide everything by the power number, which is five. So divide it by five, and you have this magic number, which is exactly like frame number zero. Now you can keyframe that, and you will end up with a cool loop and a linear move animation. Now, once you did that, you can just go back to your Vectron volume object, enable the volume, and that's it. You can just render that. And it's going to work pretty well. Then you can also change all the colors, enable the emission, um, play with the emission parameter. Um, you can even cut the fractal um and animate that is going to be cool so that's it for today's tutorial and i'm going to leave you with a few renders we did with the the back from volume setup